NetPack of FlexScale has disaster recovery capabilities that hit the target for simplicity and ease of use, and I'm going to use a site failover to demonstrate. We're going to look at a two-site, active-active configuration, where each site has clients, and data gets replicated from one site to the other in both directions to provide full site redundancy. This scenario provides protection against site-wide failure, regardless of which site fails. Just as with scaling out a cluster, or balancing client traffic between nodes, the disaster recovery process is automated by NetBackup FlexScale. For our demonstration, we have a single NetBackup domain that exists across two sites. These two sites share a primary service instance to coordinate the job queue, media services, and clients. NetBackup FlexScale is going to replicate that primary service catalog data to the other site in the background so that it's ready for takeover. For backup data, both sites have NetBackup FlexScale nodes providing shared storage pools. Storage lifecycle policies and optimized duplication will replicate our backup data from site to site. In our demonstration, Site A1's clients will have backup data replicated to Site A2. Site A2's clients will get replicated to Site A1. In a moment, when we simulate a total outage at Site A1, I'll show how easy it is to get up and running after the disaster recovery procedure. First, let's head to the infrastructure user interface for Site A2. Make sure that our disaster recovery relationship with the other site is healthy. Looking at the infrastructure monitor and the processes that are running, there's a primary service that's offline. That's normal because Site A1 is acting as the primary for both sites at the moment. In the settings view, here's the catalog replication relationship with our primary and secondary listed along with throughput. We can see that our catalog data is available at both sites due to replication. Here we have the net backup job queue. You can see backup jobs for clients at each site and duplication jobs to replicate that data to the remote site. We've set up a backup policy here for each site's clients so that they get backed up to their own site and replicated to the remote one. We're doing this by giving each protection policy a storage lifecycle policy that says to replicate data over to the other site to act as a second copy. And here when we look at storage configuration, we can see how each site has its own storage server and its own storage unit defined. This makes setting up multi-directional replication very simple. Now we'll simulate a disaster at site A1 and take it offline all at once by causing the systems to crash. Done. Now, when we check the replication status at the other site after a few minutes, we'll see an error for replication status. The remaining site realizes that the replication heartbeat is gone, and now our crashed site shows up as disconnected. All that we need to do here to get the primary up and running is to click on Change Replication Roles and assign Site A2 as the primary. From here, we can watch the takeover operation in progress while the primary service is starting. When it comes online, it will have a pre-configured IP address, so we're going to change the DNS record to point at Site A2's primary. Anyone performing a lookup from this point will get the Site A2 DNS record. Looking at the infrastructure task monitor, we see takeover is complete. So now we should be able to access the net backup primary and see it's picked up where we left off. The net backup activity monitor shows that we've already queued and started some protection jobs. With site A1 currently down, replication jobs that try to send data there are going to time out, and that's expected. If we expected site A1 to remain down for quite a while, we could change net backup storage lifecycle policies so that all the clients go to site A2 for their backups and go on with data protection without changing any client configurations. In this case, we know it's going to be back soon, since all that's needed is to restart our crash nodes to bring the site back up. Once Site A1 is back online, we can look at the infrastructure and see that catalog replication has resumed. This time, Site A2 is the replication source, since it's running the primary service. Looking at the Net Backup Activity Monitor shows that now that Site A1 is back, the storage lifecycle policies we defined earlier are completing the replication tasks again. 
We could swap the primary back to site A1 by using change replication rules and changing the primary DNS record back if we wanted to. There's no difference in functionality, only in location. It really doesn't matter to NetBackup where the primary service is running or the direction of replication. So that's how NetBackup FlexScale makes disaster recovery operations automated and site resiliency simple and flexible.